pregame.com. The Denver Broncos go to the fading Baltimore Ravens. Fade. Broncos, <laughs> Broncos are a three-point favorite in this one. VR, you're going against the grain in this one, my friend. The whole world is on Denver. Tell us why and you the like the Ravens. The whole world the keep Ravens. betting them up. Uh, they, they will keep Three and a half, four. Just go to your local, call your local bookmaker, you go to your neighborhood sports book, and bet the Denver Broncos in this spot so I could come in and get the best number on Baltimore. Listen. If you have an out in Denver, you're going to – you gonna might take seven. six. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm not knocking Denver at all. They've done a phenomenal job this season. Sure. But I'm not surprised. Here's why. They had one of the best defenses last year, yeah. one of the best special teams, one of the best coaching staffs, an excellent offense, but a horrible passing game. And then you go out and you bring in Peyton Manning, so you're going to improve that weakness. Everything else stays the same. Yeah. Of and course actually you're have very be a good, good team. receivers, too. Exactly. So, of course, you're going to be a good team. I'm not surprised at that. But they're a little bit overvalued because of who they played. This is a team that's won eight straight games. Two of those teams have a winning record. Mm -hmm. Now they're playing a Baltimore team. And I like to compare some things in, amongst other sports that happen in the NFL. And we look at baseball, and we always talk about the splits when it comes to starting pitchers, when it comes to lefty versus righty and things like that. Well, you have to do the same with football at times because some teams, when it comes to splits, it's just such a, a huge difference. We know Seattle's one of those teams. You bet them at home. You fade them on the road. It's, it's pretty simple. Don't try to make it harder than it needs to be. Baltimore's the exact same thing. You bet this team when they're at home, and you don't touch them when they're on the road. They're 5-1 and one at home this year. Denver's walking in giving them three points. On a neutral field, this is saying Denver's almost a touchdown better than Baltimore. Yeah. I just that the math just doesn't add up to me. Baltimore lost two hit games in a row now. This is the first time they've done that in over three years. This team's not gonna lose three straight. They're just too well disciplined. They're they're too well coached. And I think Ray Lewis returning is going to be good for the defense. And even when you look at some of the stats, I mean, Denver scores 28.8 points against teams that allow 23.8 points. So that's impressive. But Baltimore, they score 25 against teams that allow 23. And when you look at defensively, Denver allows 19, almost 20 points against teams that score 24. And when you look at Baltimore, they allow 21 against teams that score 23. And yet, Baltimore's, I think, schedule is just so much more difficult. I, I don't think Denver's just that much more dominant like this line reflects. I just don't see it. I don't see it in the stats anywhere. I don't see it in strength of schedule. I don't see where there's a motivational edge. I, I just I, it, I don't see it. Both teams are motivated. Exactly. Sure, definitely. Tony Sinisi, he makes a pretty good case, but you and I talked before the yeah. game, we, we, before the videos, we kind of like the other side. Boy, VR struck a chord, though. He did. When you're in uh, small town America and your local team is doing very well, like the Steelers in the 70s, it's not a great situation to be a bookmaker in Pittsburgh. I that the truth. And I think this is a bad year to be a Denver bookmaker. <laughs> uh, the, my concern about uh, Denver is they've been extremely consistent all year long, and they really have not played a poor game. The, the, maybe on Monday night against Atlanta, oh, yeah. and, and they came that back. Was week and two or three, storm though. back, that storm was, yeah. back. Right, so you couldn't uh, call that bad. My concern is Baltimore. I think they've lost their identity. They don't run the ball real well right now with Ray Rice. At the start of the year, they were playing a hurry-up offense and trying to run a lot of plays with Flacco. It seems like that's gone out the board. Let, let me interject right now, too, because they did fire Cam Cameron right. just yesterday, their offensive coordinator. So that was big news, too. I'm no, sorry. Absolutely. But I, I think it goes along with uh, you know the argument that I'm making. This They have lost their identity. Flacco is just really inconsistent right now. They're not running the ball really well. And I think defensively, they've gotten old. So this that this is a Ravens team that was built around their defense, and now you have an offense that's just floundering. I don't like this team at all. Here's what Tony and I were discussing, and his years as an odds maker, I highly respect this man because I work with him for a lot of, of things. Of course, of course. 
it's not a number play. If you look at the power ratings, my power ratings. That's what I was going to say. Do your power ratings reflect there's enough value to overcome the 11, the 10? Yeah, well, I, I think sometimes the numbers don't catch up with the performances. Yeah. And, and I think that's where the art of odds making comes into play. Right. Because you cannot be. Um, Strictly on power rating. Right. You, 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 there's, there's nuanced. Uh, aspect, and I think that's what makes a good odds maker versus a, a not so good odds maker. Yeah, see, that was our discussion. I, and our discussion, I brought it up. I said, "Is this a value trap? Because the value does look raw like power it's on the rating alone. Raw power yes. rating alone. I said, is this a value trap? And this is what began our discussion today. Is this a value trap? But we got into it. You know, it's hard to say. Did the Ravens lose their identity? You know, they they fired the coach. They haven't given the ball to Rice. Does that mean now they will give their ball to Rice more? They certainly should. I can tell you that. Uh, you know, they, they tried the, the no huddle. Uh, you know, Flacco seemed to do well with that, yeah. but they went away from it. The, the defense, listen, I think we all knew the defense was going to be down this year. They just had too much age, too many age issues. And that's why I think they went away from the no huddle because of the fact that the defense are going to have to spend so much time on the field. If your offense is only holding the ball 24, 26 minutes. All right, I, I am going to make you one promise. Give it to me. Every bookmaker in the country hopes you're I'm right. There's guys in if Baltimore. Never taken there's book. guys in Baltimore that are hoping you're if right, you're VR. Never taken book. This is your week to shine. <laughs> All right, we've talked about it. Let's go ahead and make it official. <laughs> Denver, Baltimore, I'm going to be the only person probably on this side of the Mississippi <laughs> and most likely on that side of the Mississippi. I don't even think in Baltimore they're going to be betting the Ravens this week. But I'll tell you what, this is a team that's won 15 of 16 home games. That streak was broken by the Pittsburgh Steelers with a third-string quarterback. I just think the Baltimore Ravens are a lot better than they've shown us the last two weeks. I think this line's a knee-jerk reaction to about 120 minutes worth of football. I don't think they, as much as they were up because it's the Pittsburgh Steelers, the fact that they were going up against a third-string quarterback and you just beat them two weeks prior, I, I don't think they came in as, as super motivated as they would if it was Big Ben. And last week... You know, I'm going to give them a little pass there. I like Baltimore here. Steelers were super motivated for exactly. That. That was a, exactly. They I thought they should have beat them the first time. Yeah, That's I, why. I wrote about that in gaming of today. Of course. Steelers were highly motivated. You had something else you wanted yeah. to throw. And R I mean, RG3 last week and Cousins and then that, oh, yeah. that punt return. Baltimore shouldn't have lost that game against Washington. Right. The Baltimore Ravens with an eight-point lead and four minutes left in the fourth quarter usually aren't going to yeah. lose that game. Yeah, you got the deuce and everything else. Huh? Boy, that Tomlin Harbaugh handshake was a little cold at the oh, end of the game. Oh, you think right? so? Yeah, no Christmas cards. Those. No. Two, those yeah. Yeah, you know what I think he remembers? Going, going for two on a fake kick when they were up 28. Tomlin remembered it. Okay. Stay tuned. Who are we going to next? I'm not sure. Oh, man, it's going to be a great video. When it, when We're going to a winning pick. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, this, guy, this guy convinced me quite a bit, but uh, we'll talk about that. I uh, think he did a great job. We're going to Tony's Best Bet coming up next. You can see all our, all our videos at pregame.tv.